Howdy Space Rangers, Captain Phoenix here. Before I start the video, let me just say real quick to get this out of the way. Uh, the reason my last two videos have been seeming like kind of off topic or outdated is because they are. Last week my channel got a ch channel strike by YouTube, a community guideline strike or whatever. Uh, for some dumb reason, don't want to go into it. But basically I wasn't allowed to make videos for a week. This kind of sucked because at the time I got the strike, I already had recorded those videos. So they were already like pre-recorded and ready to go. But I wasn't able to upload them. However, as you can see clearly, I was able to upload them. The strike has been lifted and now I can make videos once again. So uh, enjoy those videos and uh, here's my Kenobi review. So where the, this review was supposed to be is where those videos were supposed to be. But as mentioned, the channel strike kind of ruined my plans. So um, yeah. Yeah, anyways, that's gonna that that's why my channel has been offline and why I will make this week Star Wars week because these two last two videos were released on Monday and Tuesday. This video is gonna come out on Wednesday. Uh it's actually Sunday as a recording, so there's that. And tomorrow, Thursday, I'm gonna release another video where I react to my Kenobi prediction. So I'm basically making this Star Wars week. So and I haven't seen Lightyear or Jurassic World Dominion because I haven't been to theaters and I don't have money for it. So haven't seen any other movies. We're just gonna talk about Star Wars this whole week. And uh, yeah, I've rambled on too much. Let's get on to the actual meat of it. So let's talk about Kenobi. Kenobi. Anyway, uh, what do I what do I say about this show? Let's talk about how hyped I was for it. So first of all, I remember the show got announced like in twenty eighteen, and it no no yeah it was announced in twenty eighteen, and production started in twenty twenty. So I have been waiting four years for this show. Now, to a lot of people, will be like, oh, we've been waiting for the prequels since this show. But this show was never really a thing anyone thought it was gonna be. Actually, Disney was gonna make this a movie. Uh, but I remember after Disney had acquired Star Wars, they're like, hey, we're gonna make a bunch of spin-off movies. So we're gonna make Solo in 2018, we're gonna make Episode 9 in 2019, and then in 2020, we're gonna get, I think, the Obi-Wan film, and then in 2020, it was gonna be, like, the Boba Fett film. Like, they had already planned which movies they were gonna make. However, because Solo failed at the box office, we got a Kenobi show and a Boba Fett show. Those That was when they were like, okay, fine, we're just gonna get shows, why not? And let me just say, everyone was hyped for this show. This was the most hyped Star Wars, like, thing ever more hype than any other show uh, Disney had made and on top of that even like right now it's the most viewed show on like Disney plus so you can you know that they were gonna make make a big deal out of this and let me just say even for me uh, for a long time I wanted this show to be a thing even like back when I was like 12 when I first got into Star Wars I was writing like constant fanfics for this show what I thought it was gonna be in my mind and I kid you not in my mind I was actually imagining a fight where Vader and Obi-Wan were on like Tatooine and they had come across each other once more and then Vader and Obi-Wan were fighting and I remember there was this scene I had in my mind where Vader was holding Obi-Wan mid-air like he was like force stroking Obi-Wan mid-air and then he had ignited his lightsaber and then he was gonna pull Obi-Wan to like kind of splice him you a splice room with the lightsaber however obi-wan would have jumped over vader and like they would continue the fight and i get you know in this show they have a scene like that where vader lifts obi-wan force choking him but instead of like trying to spike him with a lightsaber he throws him in fire sort of like what obi-wan did to him on mustafa this show has a lot of things i love from uh from like my old little fanfic say straight as a kid and i can't wait to talk about it let's get into it so this show was six episodes long which sad which is sad i wish uh, it was like eight or ten episodes long but let me give my show reviews on each episode episode one was basically what i expected the show to be i honestly don't even know why people were mad at this episode because like the episode was kind of a very slow show it showed obi-wan like cutting meat and uh working and then watching luke in the evening and him basically just kind of being miserable after the events of revenge of the sith and i'm like this is kind of what i expected the show to be back when disney said the show was going to be like four episodes long i thought it was going to be four episodes of just nonsense of, of obi-wan just chilling on tatooine and Trying to learn to be a Jedi, connecting with the Force, probably having conversations with Qui-Gon Jinn, slowly becoming the Ali Guinness Obi-Wan Kenobi we all know from episode 4. But for some reason, people really did not like this episode, and I don't get it. I, this episode was basically what I expected it to be, so I was fine with it. The part I will admit was kind of dumb was the Leia chase scene. So for one, I did not know Leia was going to be like a main character in this show, the trailers never marketed her at all. So the fact that... We finally got her. Was I surprised? But, but man, what the hell was this episode about? She gets chased by like a bunch of dudes trying to kidnap her, and they're like running through a forest, and they're like, "Oh, a branch! Oh no!" Oh, then, oh no, she went under a rock. Whatever will we do? It was very Disneyfied, and I'm like, "This is a Star Wars universe. You know, you could just shoot her with like a stun gun, right? And she'd be like knocked out. You could." 
kidnap her without harming her. I don't know what the hell was going on. So, yeah, episode 1 was fine. Episode 2 was a downgrade. This one, I would argue, is probably the worst episode of the season. Uh, we had another layer chase, which was just silly and goofy. And the episode felt like it was trying to fit in as many fanfics as possible. Because I even remember, like, in this episode, Obi-Wan's, like, being chased by bounty hunters and inquisitors. And he doesn't fight a lot of them. Hell, he doesn't even ignite his lightsaber in this episode. And then, like, we end with him reconnecting with the Force to save Leia. And I'm like, this feels very fan fictitious but it felt like i was trying to do too much so much stuff was trying to be crammed in this episode and it was kind of ridiculous i don't know this episode just wasn't my favorite if anything it was like the weakest of the season episode three was fine i didn't care for most of the episode except the dark the darth vader introduction of course and the conversations between obi-wan and little Leia. i loved how obi-wan talked about his family the fact that he has a brother out there how funny would it be if his brother was actually named ben i know people are like making fun of the obi-2 meme but i think ben would ben would be a lot funnier uh obi-wan just named himself like his brother and we got to see more of little Leia. Can I just say I love little Leia? But I'll talk about the characters in a, in a little more. And of course, I love the ending. The second half of this episode was definitely the final like ten minutes of this episode were definitely the best. Vader just walking through the city, destroying people. Oh my god! Did he just did he just snap that kid's neck? Like oh yeah, look at me. This is how cool I am. Being the Sith is dope. And then he like burns Obi Wan in the fire. Ironic. Obi Wan gay roasted by both Owen and Vader. Man, I tell you, the last Skywalker brothers, they hold they hold nothing back. Episode 4 was a bit weird now. This one felt more like a video game episode in that this video episode felt like it was paying homage to like the Star Wars games. Like, for example, we have uh, the Inquisitor base on Nur, which is from Fallen Order. It first appeared in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And we have Obi-Wan sneaking into it the same way Cal Kestis sn snuck into that base. So that's crazy. Um... And then, apparently, there's also, like, some Force, force Unleashed references with, with the way Obi-Wan was, like, cutting down Stormtroopers. And the fact that he was getting, like, cornered by Stormtroopers on all sides and deflecting them felt a lot like a video game. However, the ending of this episode was just goofy as hell. What? My goofy uncle is holding me captive. What the hell was going on in the writing room? Whoa, people smoking. So many things were wrong with the end of this episode. For example, we had Reva blocking ship blasters? Uh, no. Nigga, uh... No. You don't block ship blasters with a lightsaber. That has been shown time and time again to not be a feature. Why is she doing it all of a sudden? And yeah, yeah, I know the argument is that they're speeders and they're smaller, but like, brah. And then we have Obi-Wan hiding Leia in his, like, trench coat. Oh boy, I did not know we were in a Disney animated cartoon Saturday 6 a.m. show. What is going on here? What is this? Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> And how did they just walk without being caught? I mean, yeah, they get caught, but like, no one found it suspicious that just a regular dude has a bulge in his side. Bruh! And then we have the Wade death scene. This was just hilarious. Oh my god. Wait! No! So that's it. So yeah, uh, this this uh, this this episode was not as bad as episode two with how bloated it would feel. Honestly, it felt kind of short compared to the others, but it was definitely the most ridiculous of the of the six. And yeah, second to worst. Episode five though was near perfect. I loved seeing the actual might of the Empire. And while I would have preferred Vader being on the planet when they were destroying like the the refugee base or whatever, uh, having Reva and Inquisitor like command the stormtroopers and the cannons was really cool. Oh my gosh, I felt so much hype when I watched that episode. I was like, oh yeah, this, this is good. This is real. This is the good stuff. Oh, uh, money. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, Reva was just being, uh, what's this? So I really liked the interactions with Ruben Kenobi. I liked the fact that we actually delved into her backstory. And of course, this Vader, this episode gave us Vader being a beast. Oh my gosh. First of all, we just see him like bringing down the ship, destroying it piece by piece. And then the battle with him and Reva was just amazing. Dude wasn't even trying. This is peak Vader. Dude is toying with his food. And like that's the whole character behind Vader. Is that he's such an OP character. No one gives him a challenge when he's fighting them. And that's like, like why when he goes to fight other Jedi, he always toys with them. Because he's 
it's like no one gives me a challenge like i'm gonna let you live for as long as possible just try and hit me dude and i really love the fact that we get an op villain this uh show really showed what it's like for a villain to be op and the heroes to not like reach that level and in obi-wan's case he'll never reach that level because he's not gonna be as strong as anakin is the only person who could come close would be like luke or maybe palpatine or something so i really liked it and of course this episode was written by the guy who directed finding nemo so uh instantly best show ever best episode ever you're like <laughs> give it an emmy award a grammy award whatever whatever the fudge you give uh shows like this <laughs> um episode six was also a near perfect episode i loved the vader obi-wan rematch i loved owen and beru's relationship the way beru's like oh you chased obi-wan away now look what happened someone's trying to kill our nephew uh so i really like that obviously the obi-wan vader rematch was just beautiful i love how obi-wan like cut vader's mask similar to how ahsoka cut it but like he only cut half the mask meaning it was like symbolic of how he released only half of anakin and the lightsaber colors like how it glows blue in vader's face when it's back to anakin but then when vader takes over it's like red oh Oh my god, I love the parallels here. And I love how even it ties into the original trilogy. Where like only Vader and Ahsoka like cut off half of Vader's mask. But Luke was the only one who was able to fully remove Vader's mask. And he was able to remove it with like, you know, kindness and love for his father. Whereas the other two are like, we must save Anakin and we'll use violence to do it. Ah, oh, this episode was so good. And of course, we had the Qui-Gon cameo at the end. I do wish we got quite more Qui-Gon throughout the season. However, the way they explain it at the end was still uh, worth it. And honestly, if they were making a season two, now that's when i'll be like more qui-gon please but uh yeah if i were to rank the episodes i'll rank them as episode two and four would definitely be the worst and then one and three are the kind of good ones and then six and five are the just amazing ones and i wish six and five were basically what the whole series was about now let's talk about the characters obi-wan i really like obi-wan's character arc here where he kind of goes from being the depressed jedi sort of like how luke was in the last jedi and then he um he must, you know, slowly turn into the Alec Guinness Obi-Wan. I thought that change should have been a bit more gradual or it should have been more impactful with the way the story was going. But I think I liked it fine. I like how he does his episode 3 pose, the, was it, Form 3 Suresu pose when he's fighting Vader. And not the uh, Qui-Gon pose or the Alec Guinness pose, showing that he hasn't fully matured yet. And, uh, but I do like the fact that he's now, at the end of the season, he dawns on a brown cloak. Because, like, the fun thing with Obi-Wan is that in the prequels, he was, like, a white cloak. And in the original originals he wears a brown cloak and the fact that he's wearing the brown cloak sh shows that he's slowly becoming Alec Guinness and again he's talking to Qui-Gon so we know he's gonna strike Qui-Gon's fa famous pose towards the end of the season just I love the visual storytelling with this show Vader Anakin well Darth Vader and Anakin in this show were really good I obviously love having Hayden Christensen back him and Ewan McGregor did a spectacular on their acting job I do think it's some of the best stuff here and I really do love Vader's well just menaciness My Vader was honestly my favorite part of this show. This show gave me what I exactly wanted from Darth Vader. We see him like watching, walking through a village, just decimating everything in his path. We see him deal Riva in a fight, bro. B bro barely bo broke a sweat in that fight. We even see him in like episode four, where he's like marching down the hall. Mind you, he wasn't like in episode four. Like he was only there for like two minutes. But like when he's watch mar marching down the hall, and he's like, "You were warned," as he's like choking Riva midair. Oh my god, I'm like, yo, 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 and um. It's episode six we have him and kenobi you know having a final battle like, just good vader was a mate was done amazing in this show and i wouldn't have it any other way this is how you do a villain this no one people regard him as the greatest movie villain of all time so uh yeah vader and obi-wan i love their final conflict as well uh, i love the inner struggle between uh vader in vader uh the fact that he's still struggling to fully become vader like he's still transitioning from anakin to vader i do wish the i do think though that this change kind of was a bit gradual like the fact that this show takes place 10 years after Revenge of the Sith and 10 years before New Hope kind of feels a bit weird I feel like Vader would have worked a lot better as Vader or like Anakin if it was a bit earlier like if this show was set like three years after Revenge of the Sith or even five years after Revenge of the Sith for example where we have Anakin fully transitioning into becoming Darth Vader I think that would have been more believable because like 10 years later it seems like a long time for this guy to be like okay now I'm, I want to be a cool Sith Lord of the galaxy I don't know I feel like if you really wanted to have Vader in that transitioning phase it should have been a bit sooner like maybe five six years after Revenge of the Sith I understand why they did it because we needed to have like Leia in this show and we needed to have her be an acting like 
character. Uh, and it just wouldn't have worked too well with a six year old. But like, I don't know, I just I think it would have been a lot better if like Vader was a bit more vicious in this show. But I still appreciate the fact that we still get Anakin transitioning into Vader. And by the end of the season, he's more or less committed to the bit. And he also, again, becomes more or less like the Anakin Vader we see in Rebels. Because like Rebels takes place like four years after this show. And the Vader in Rebels is a lot more ruthless, a lot more vicious. And even when Ahsoka tries to like bring him back to the light, he's like, oh, hell no. I am full-on evil and even just like the way his suit is designed he looks much more angry in that show so i really do like the fact that we're going into more rebels vader and the fact that it's only four years for vader to fully become that ruthless guy it's good it's good anyways i love the transitioning from anakin to vader and as mentioned i love the symbolic uh messaging at the end of the season okay obvious clip is obvious <laughs> Is it like lightsaber changes and where he's like you didn't fail me obi-wan I killed Anakin, like, mm, this is such good stuff. Like, the character development between Obi-Wan and Vader, where Obi-Wan's like, oh, it wasn't my fault? Okay, cool, I mean, you do you then. Like, mm, so good. And then we have Reva. Now, for those who don't remember, a couple weeks ago I made a video talking about why people should, like, shut up about Moses Ingram, the actress who plays Reva. And now that the show is over, let me give my honest thoughts about her. I liked Reva. I thought her character in the show was fine. And uh, the fact that she was being kind of annoying or like over the top wasn't even like a flaw with the show. Because even the characters in the show do call it out. They're like, Reva, what's wrong with you, bro? Like, you're being kind of silly. What you doing like this? And it, and I really think that her being brash and over the top does work for her character specifically because, well, I don't even, I don't even know like how to say it properly, but like it works with her character, mostly due to the fact that she acts like a child still. Because Reva's backstory is that she was a youngling during the attack on the Jedi Temple. And now she wants to avenge all the younglings Anakin killed. And Anakin kind of almost killed her, but she uh, she survived. So what happened? So I really do think Reva's character works well in this show. As she's basically still a kid just trying to get revenge on Anakin. Because she was when she was a young lean, her life was essentially taken away from her. And now she wants to like exact revenge on Anakin. And because she's been stuck in that mind space for all of her life, for like the past 10 years, to me, I still see her as a kid. Or at the very least, she's an adult who's never really grown up, who's never been able to grow past what Anakin did to her as a kid. And I mean, it makes sense. She's worked for Anakin, but uh, she works like for Anakin. But I do think her character in universe makes sense. And the fact that the other characters call it out is like equally fine because it shows that the show is self-aware of what it's doing and it wants, you, and it wants to let you know what it does. And if we're going to talk about Moses Ingram's like acting, uh, in regards to Reva, I think she does a phenomenal job, especially in the first few episodes. I really do did feel like Moses Ingram was letting her all out. In later episodes, she was like a, you could tell like she was a bit more accustomed to the role, but in the first few episodes, you could tell she was really trying, and I give respects to that. So Reva as a character and the actress who plays her, it's fine with it. And Star Wars fans, please shut the hell up before you attack an actor the next time, uh, before you even like let them finish. Uh, then we have Leia. Little Leia is also hands down one of my new favorite Star Wars characters. I just love her. She is so adorable. She's like, okay, we're gonna do this now. And the fact that she knows what to do in every situation is just very fun. I get that she grew up in like a palace and she's supposed to be more grown up than she is. But the fact that a 10 year old is calling all these shots, I just find it so, I don't know, funny. Then again... She is, like, going on diplomatic missions when she's 20, and she even helped the Rebels in Star Wars Rebels when she's, like, 14, 15 around there, so it's not a stretch to assume that she's also kind of smart and capable of taking care of herself when she's 10. It's just those chase scenes, man. Like, that was ridiculous. But Lil Leia, I loved it. She was definitely a highlight in this show. Uh, though I could tell they were trying to do what the Mandalorian did by pairing a Star Wars character up with... Uh, a child because that's what they did in the mandalorian it's what they're doing in the bad batch with the bad batch and omega and then it's kind of what they did in the clone Wars with anakin and ahsoka and now they're doing it here again with obi-wan and Lil leia so i don't know if i like this trend of them like pairing a character up with a child and then having that character go on adventures as a child because even me but like episode three or five or four i was like okay can we get leia home already like i want the focus to be on obi-wan and vader and we only get that focus like in the last episode again i'm not hating ca her character i just feel like her being around was kind of more or less holding back the good drama we call going from just obi-wan and vader but it's neither here nor there and then we have owen and his family owen i feel like in the season was done really well with how he doesn't really like obi-wan and he has to come to terms with 
Obi-Wan just hanging around because they both need to take care of Luke. And I really like Obi-Wan at the end is like, okay, he needs to be a boy. Take care of him, Owen. I'm peacing out. And then no one's like, yes, finally. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, uh, and I really do like the sort of relationship between him and Obi-Wan. I really wish you got more of that in the season. Honestly, I would have rather a pairing between Obi-Wan and Owen rather than Obi-Wan and Leia as I feel like them having to like come to terms with each other and being forced to work together to get back home to Luke would have worked a lot better. Adam. Leave us alone. When the time comes, he must be trained. Like you trained his father. Again, you know, it's what we got. It is what it is. Uh, Beru, I really also liked her character in the last episode where she's like supportive of Obi-Wan and she's like, you know, if he were here, he could have protected Luke, you dummy. Now, Luke, we have to defend him ourselves. And <laughs> Owen's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> We're going to do this anyway. And of course, little Luke was fun, but we didn't get as much of him as little Leia. And honestly, looking at both little Luke and little Leia, I find it hard to believe these two are siblings. Like, what the hell? Little Leia is like so capable of herself and little Luke is just... I'm a 10-year-old, man. I'm, I'm just a regular 10-year-old. So, I, I mean, again, it's basically nature versus nurture. Where you grew up, that's kind of what defines you. But, yeah, that's basically all I have to say about this show. In conclusion, this show really has reignited my love for Star Wars. It's not the best show out there, and hell, it's not even the best Star Wars show. But it is my fir third favorite. I do think Mandalorian and uh, Clone Wars are better. Mandalorian, I, uh, and both of these sh shows, I could just like chalk it up to them having more seasons. Mandalorian has like two, Clone Wars has like seven, so <laughs> way more than Kenobi. But at the end of the day, it is still a really good show with a lot of effort and passion put into it. It made me feel like... A a 12 year old again it made me feel like a real on kid again it made me feel like a true star wars fan back in the days when i was like just writing thick fan fiction and being like what if this character fought this character and oh my gosh what if this story was told it really did make me feel like i was experiencing star wars for the first time again and that's why so many of my recent videos have been star wars related and even why i've said again this entire week is going to be star wars week so it's just insane so even though this show kind of rendered the kenobi book non-canon and mind you that kenobi book is one of my favorite books of all time i even talked about the kenobi book when i was like breaking down the trailer for this show uh but even though it rendered the book non-canon there is still a hope that the that this may be not be the case the show checked all the boxes of my personal fanfic and i guess it's what i expected and with 10 more years of um of star wars gap in between kenobi and a new hope maybe they'll find a way to make the book canon again <laughs> season two anyone I, i'd be done for season two <laughs> but uh yeah so what do i have to say in comparison to the other shows shows like the mandalorian feel more like a video game uh, especially like even with Boba Fett just tying into other properties but this show felt like a long movie and I would rather we have this show over the proposed movie we would have got maybe in another universe I would have preferred the movie but again that means we wouldn't have the show and I wouldn't have anything to compare it to but I will say this show made me feel something while I could go without seeing a Boba Fett or a Bad Batch season 2 I absolutely wanted to see more of this show. This show made me want to see more. And I want to see more Obi-Wan, more Qui-Gon, more Vader, and how he becomes a villain. And how even Obi-Wan becomes Alec Guinness, or slowly turns into our uh, the Alec Guinness version of Obi-Wan in Episode 4. And hell, even I would like to see Leia and Roken becoming uh, leaders of the Rebellion, and how that would even tie into Star Wars Rebels. I just want to see more of this show. I want to see all aspects it can introduce, and how cool that would be. But... Uh, I do feel like since this is a limited series and Disney Market is a limited series, it probably won't happen. I don't see us getting a season 2. Maybe we'll get some sort of follow-up story, but the closest we have is Rebels. So if you want to see the story in a continue in some way, shape, or form, go watch Rebels. But uh, yeah, this show, while not perfect, and it's definitely not perfect, I'll let you know, is truly, in my opinion, a love letter to Star Wars and to the Star Wars fans. And with that, I will comfortably... Give it an 8 out of 10. One of the better Star Wars shows out there, I will say. So, the next video I react to will be my predictions uh, for the Obi-Wan show, the theories I was going to give for this show, what I got right, what I got wrong, and how it could improve my analyzing skills uh, if I was completely wrong. I haven't watched the video yet. I'm going to react to it um, when I like film it so as you guys will see my proper reactions as to what i said and didn't say but uh yeah anyways guys thank you so very much for watching um be sure to cut that subscribe button blast the like button jedi mind trick the notification bell and may the force be with you always goodbye my space rangers and with that i will see you in another universe